Now let's say that when we get to the bottom here, um, we're going to uh, uh, we hit a spring. With a spring constant of three newtons per meter. So we're just gonna do this pretty fast. We won't be able to talk too much about springs. Um, but now there will be a spring force on the object. What direction do you think will be the direction of the spring force on the object? So let's say now that there's no friction. So this is a different problem. Opposite of the motion. So what direction will that be? Because we know the spring doesn't like being compressed, just from common sense, even though we haven't talked about springs. We know they don't like being compressed, so it's going to push against the object. Um, what will be the other forces on this object? Well, there will still be the weight and the normal force, but now there's no friction because I changed the problem, so there's no friction. So let's go through our steps. Now the question is, how far will this slide before the spring brings it to rest? From this point on, how far will the object slide before the spring brings it to rest? Okay, so identify the initial and the final points. Well, the initial point is when we first hit the spring. Suppose the spring is pretty much right smack dab at the bottom of the, point, at the, bottom of the slope. And what would the final point be? Well, that would be around here when we've come to rest. We should start by assuming that the spring was originally um, unstressed. When there was nothing touching the spring, it would be at an unstressed natural length. Identify all the forces on the object. We did this. Split these into conservative and non-conservative. Is the weight conservative or non-conservative? Conservative. How about the spring force? Non-conservative. Oh, conservative. I didn't talk about this much, but I briefly mentioned that the only two conservative forces this term are the spring force and the weight. So this will also be conservative, just because we're just memorizing that. How about the normal force? Normal conservative. Okay, good. Um, now we need to write, what's our key equation? Net net WAC equals WG. Equals what? I mean delta E. Right? What does this stand for on the left-hand side? KI. I'm sorry, on the left hand oh, side? Oh, I'm sorry, what I meant was this stands for the network done by the non conservative oh, okay. forces. All right, um, so now we need to figure out which of these forces are going to give us a number here. Number. Is the work going to give us a number for this? No. Because, because it's a conservative. It's conservative, and this is only non conservative forces. Yeah. Will the spring force give us a number for here? No. No, because we've memorized that the spring force is the other conservative force. Will the normal force give us a number for here? No. no. That's right. Why not? Because it's perpendicular to, to the work. Careful. Perpendicular. Motion. The motion. <laughs> Who's perpendicular to who? <laughs> the normal force is per perpendicular to the motion. That's right. <laughs> the normal force here is perpendicular to the motion. We should have written down the velocity vector so we could see that. If the force is perpendicular to your motion, you're doing no work. So this comes out to be a big zero here. So can we use conservation of energy on this problem? Yes. yes. That's, do you see why this equation means conservation of energy? If you say that energy, the change in energy is zero, that means conservation of energy. So how can I rewrite this as our basic equation for conservation of energy? Zero equals delta K plus delta E. Good. I'm going to skip a step, or maybe this is the best way to write that. E initial equals E final. So we're in the right-hand column for step four, not the left-hand column. In the previous example, we were in the left-hand column because we had friction, which was doing work. But now we're in the right-hand column for step four, conservation of energy. All right, now what? Um, now we have Ki plus Ui equals Kf plus Uf. Excellent. Okay, now what should we plug in for Ki? Um, one half mass times possible 
Now the mass here is five kilograms. And what's the velocity? Well, we figured that out before. We'd already figured out what the velocity would be at the bottom. Don't forget to square that. All right, now let me give you some help here. On this problem, we have two different types of potential energy, don't we? There's the gravitational energy and the spring energy. The gravitational one is zero, but the spring isn't. That sounds good. You always have to worry about gravitational potential energy, because there's always a weight. Um, but if we can consider that this is the ground, then the energy is zero. Even if this wasn't the ground, the left-hand gravitational energy would cancel the right-hand gravitational energy, right? The left hand would cancel the right hand, whoever you, whoever you say is the ground, because they would be equal. So again, lots of things end up being zero in these types of problems. You've got to watch for the things that are zero. All right, now I need to give you a formula for calculating spring potential energy. Well, it turns out that the formula for the spring potential energy is 1 half k x squared. We didn't have time to talk about that much. x is how far the spring has been stretched or compressed. x is how much the spring has been stretched, stretched or compressed. That's a constant about the spring. So notice here I have to use different symbols for gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. OK, well, now here's a little bit of a trick question. What would the initial spring potential energy be? Zero. Because remember, initially it hadn't been stretched or compressed at all. It was just resting here. So what was the initial x? Yeah, if you plug in a zero for x, you would get zero energy. So this term is also going to cancel out at zero. Additionally, there was no energy stored in the spring. So all we have left on the left-hand side here was the initial kinetic energy. All right, and what about our right-hand side? Um, what should we plug in for the uh, final kinetic energy? Zero. Because it's going to be at rest. The question is about how far we're sliding before we come to rest. So I mean, you really got to watch out for terms that are going to end up being zero. You can see that if a lot of things weren't zero, this would be too hard, because there's three terms on the left and three terms on the right. So we have to trust that a lot of things will cancel. All I have left here now is the spring potential energy. So we've got 1 half times 5 times 10.8 squared. And how are we going to calculate that spring potential energy? That's 1 half. What should I plug in for k? Um, Right? We're working with standard units here, so I'll leave the units out. And we shouldn't plug in anything for x. Do you see that that's really what the question is asking us for? How far we're going to be stretching is basically how far we're going to slide before we're done. And now we just have one equation and one unknown. So let's work through that algebra. So what would the answer be? 13.9 or 13.94 meters. 